All right, good morning, everyone. This is the Platform App Developer Study Group, uh, the June 4th ed edition. Um, so just a, a quick reminder, we, um, see if I can advance my slides, just the quick ground rules that we had. Um, you don't have to take the exam. Um, you, you do have to participate, so please continue to participate. If you can't attend, let Carla or I know. Um, when you are ready to present a topic, you'll do your homework on it. And if you get stuck, you can always reach out to Carla or I. Um, if you do um, take, the, take the exam, please come back and let us know how it goes. We, we're very interested in seeing how effective uh, any of what we are doing is for you. And then we're here to support each other. So um, if, if and when you, well, not if and when, it's when you are up to present, if you um, you don't have to feel like you're, to, you don't have to be an expert on the topic. It's just a matter of, of uh, really kind of facilitating it. And, um, and we'll kind of just help each other as a group as we go through various topics. So um, that will be, be awesome. So then, and just a reminder on where everything's at. Um, of course, you all know that our meeting URL is here. We are recording and they'll be posted on uh, my YouTube page. So if by chance you do miss a session, you're able to uh, follow up by going to that uh, URL. That'll take you to uh, Terry's Tidbits uh, YouTube channel. Our shared drive is here and all of our presentations. If you do a presentation, we'll, we ask that you upload that to this folder. And then also our weekly schedule and assignments are there. So this week we are talking about data modeling and management and we have two presenters uh, today, one on the data model scenarios and then uh, relationship types. And so if we look at our study guide, it's, it's these two sections here and um, Tyler. Did I get it right? Tyler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 we were having a conversation before everybody else joined. It's like, how, how do I know when it's Taylor versus Tyler? And it's T-A. And then I, I was going through that in my head to see if I could get it right. And I got it right. I'll get it wrong later in the, in the meeting, so don't worry. <laughs> so we're doing the, these two topics today. Um, I think I'm going to switch the order, though, and, and Matt, have you go first and then let... Um, Tyler, go go second. I'm going to do that every time. Stop laughing at me, Carla. Come on. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's all I've got. So I'm going to stop sharing. And then, Matt, if you want to take over, um, okay. I will yeah. let you. Let me um, make sure that I am allowing you to. Was I sharing what I just had up there? You were. Yeah. Okay, sharing. good. Terry, I have a quick question before we move yes. on from here. So the Kansas City user group is on the 18th? Yes, good good question. That is, um, I, I am inclined since half of you are from Kansas City and I am also presenting at that, that meeting. I'm inclined to skip that week if everybody's in agreement with that. Does that sound okay? I'm okay with that. Okay. I think we'll plan on that then. And um, that'll just give the presenters that week a couple extra, uh, a little bit more time to get things together as well. Well, and I wanted to see your presentation. I kinda, <laughs> too, I, so I, I was I'm, worried I would miss it. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to do it too. I think it, 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 it's a presentation that um, we had a gentleman at the Des Moines user group, he gave a presentation on storytelling. And my, mine is a twist on his, so it's not it's not exactly what he did, but for those that are in Des Moines that want to join the, join it, I'll use the same template that he did, but um, the, the, the rest of it, everything surrounding it will be slightly different. So it should be a lot of fun. And I think it has a lot of practical application for people. So um, yeah, I'm excited uh, to be able to present that should be good. Hey, Terry, instead of skipping a week, and maybe we could talk about it later, um, maybe doing another day that week, 
unless oh, it doesn't can... work for any way, just because it's such already a long time anyway. Yeah. If it works, since there's a small amount of people on the call, we could check and see if everyone's open maybe Tuesday at noon or something like that, or Wednesday. I'm okay with that as well. Tuesday at noon is our Let's Get Flowing, so we have a oh. user group meeting that day. Not that but I could, do I could do Wednesday or Friday or even Monday that week if that. Yeah, if we want to either send out a quick survey or an email or just do a consensus quick here, we could. Okay. Wednesday. Got, Maris uh, says Wednesday. One vote for Wednesday. Does Wednesday work for everybody else? Is that the 17th? Yep. Wednesday the 17th. That works for me. Okay. All right. I will just reschedule that one then for the 17th. For the, for the same time? Same time. Hmm. Did, did you guys talk? Did you guys talk about like five p.m. something like that? Because some people might have meetings. Um, yeah, we um, we we the, typically try to do it over lunch. Got it. But got it. Yeah. Uh, I I'm from Nebraska, so maybe I'm okay. into you group. So. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. Because my my problem is. I had meeting until 12. I have one more meeting at one, so no time for lunch, but uh, so it's, that, yeah, it's, that's, that's just me. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll work out. And if, and maybe to, um, it's gonna be the, most of the time it's the same time every week. And so if you get it on your calendar early, maybe that'll help too. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, I appreciate that feedback though. Yeah. Um, does noon work generally for everybody else? Is it is this a, I mean, we don't have to be married to this time if any, if uh, if we do. I, as for me, my brain is fried by five p.m. So I'm not <laughs> doing noon. <laughs> All right, very good, very good. Yeah. All right, um, let's go ahead then and get into our presentation. So, Matt, I'm going to let you take over if you are ready. It, it's saying uh, that the host is not enabled. Oh yeah, to... yeah, yeah, yeah. Zoom is adding so much security stuff. I forget that uh, every time I come in, it's something new. So there you go. You should be good now. Okay. All right. And please let me know if you can see my screen, the presentation. Looks good. Ooh. Kind of now weird. we see your notes too. <laughs> <laughs> how do i do that i don't even wait let me do this um if yeah in the dis display settings is that how you can do it at the top there oh, that works yeah um it's always fun trying to figure out how to do a presentation because it, 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 it does exactly like what you did unless you adjust for it so goofy. I'm sorry. How do I how do I get it on this one? So if you go back into the uh, presenter or yeah, like go to actually present the slideshow. I don't know how to get back to that. There's a display settings there at the bottom of your screen. You see yeah. that? Is, oh, okay. um, yeah. Would that be it? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, so hit the little one that's like a little yeah, that. projector screen. Yeah, that. And so now at the top there, the display settings, and then swap okay. presenter view and slideshow or just duplicate. Just, yeah, either swap or, yeah, nice. Okay, good, thank you. PowerPoint mastery, huh? There we go. <laughs> um, and, and you get that for free today, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I'm, I'm the first guinea pig here and uh, doing a relationship type. So this is everything that you ever wanted to know about relationship types. Um, obviously, I'm not an expert. I'm uh, relatively new as a certified admin. I'm not super new to Salesforce, but um, anybody who wants to jump in at any time and, you know, add something or uh, correct something, uh, please do so. Um, but I'll just jump in. Um, Terry and Carla, am I, should I keep this around 20 minutes? Is that the, the goal? Yeah, 20, 20 to 30. There's just two of you today. So yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a big topic, so that makes sense. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so we'll talk about the relationship types uh, and then how that affects the record access and the users and the reporting. So uh, I got a lot here, but please feel free to jump in at any time. 
Uh, so the main two we're talking about here are master detail and lookup. And these are relationships between two objects. Um, so we're using it anytime the two objects are related, um, either in a tight way or in a more uh, loosely way for the lookup. Uh, I touched a little bit on other relationships. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on those. I just have kind of one slide that mentions all of them. So at least we're aware. Um, but in general, these are, are parent-child relationships where you can have one to one parent to child, one parent to many children, or, or even many to many uh, if you use the, the junction object. Um, and with all the relationships, you establish the relationship on the child object. Um, and I, I have some examples of how that, how that works. So I'll jump right into the first one. So master detail, uh, parent-child relationship can be one-to-one, one, one parent to one child, one-to-many, or many-to-many. Many. Uh, in the master detail, the master is the parent, the detail is the child. And with this one, this is when they are closely related, uh, the detail record cannot exist without the master. So for example, if you delete a master record, the detail record associated with it, or the detail records associated with it would also be deleted. Uh, you do create the relationship on the child object and um, the parent having a, a parent field designated is required. So that field cannot be left blank. Um, I work for AMC movie theaters, um, at least for the time being, if you've seen the news, that's not um, the, the most <laughs> stable scenario in the country. Um, but I, uh, I'm still there now. Uh, so I use uh, for the examples throughout this, I use a, a, a custom object called theater. So theater is, is like an entire building and we have some fields on the theater. And then uh, we have a child object, a detail object called auditorium. So uh, as I do my examples, theater would be the whole building and auditorium would be an individual screen, an individual room auditorium within that theater. And that'll be the, the detail object as, as I go through some examples. So uh, for a master detail, standard objects can be the master, but they cannot be on the detail side of master detail. So for example, an account cannot be a standard or cannot be a detail object to opportunity. Uh, account cannot be a, a detail object to or the child of theater, the custom object I just made. Um, the custom objects can be on the detail side of the master detail with a couple of exceptions. So um, for example, we use a, a custom object called gift card program. That can be the child or the detail of a standard object account. And in my scenario that I'm gonna show, my custom object auditorium can be the child of another custom object, which is theater. Um, the exceptions to this um, of, the, of standard objects being the parent is that lead and user cannot be the parent object in a master detail relationship. So any questions pop up along the way, just let me know. And by the way, I'm not like seeing any of the Zoom. So if there's any like comments or, or anything like that, just, you know, please say them verbally because I, I don't see them. Um, okay, uh, so deleting. Uh, so I mentioned this before, when you delete the master, um, it does delete the detail, but that does not work vice versa. So if you delete a detail record, it does not delete the master. But if you do delete the master, the detail is deleted with it. Um, this is uh, interesting. This is something I learned when I was preparing for it. I didn't know. Uh, if you undelete the master, it also undeletes the detail at the same time if you, if you started by deleting the master. So if you delete a master record, It'll delete the detail. If I undelete it, then it'll undelete the detail also. However, if I if I delete a detail record first, and then I delete the master record, when I undelete the master, that, that detail record does not come back. It's not allowed to come back. So um, just something to be aware of, I guess. I don't know if that would be a exam question, but something I learned. Uh, Reparenting. So the default uh, is that child record cannot be reparented. So in my scenario, I have, a, I have a theater. Theater has auditorium number one. That auditorium cannot be assigned to a different theater um, by default. 
However, there is an option to allow reparenting. Uh, so when I'm going through and setting up that master detail relationship, there is a checkbox that says child records can be reparented to others uh, after they are created. So when you're setting that up, that's something to think about on the front end. Um, if you want to be able to change the child record down the road. Uh, ownership and sharing. So these are, are pretty straightforward. The child uh, owner, the detail and the detail, master detail, um, defaults to the parent owner. So there isn't a separate owner field. Whoever owns the master record automatically owns the detail record. So it doesn't actually have its own owner field. And the same thing is true with sharing rules. Child objects don't have independent sharing rules uh, or manual sharing rules or cues, which require that separate owner field. So they inherit all of the ownership and sharing from the parent. And the same thing with security. Security is inherited from the parent and can't be set independently other than uh, the same area right here. I just went back a slide where you can see that the, uh, the, you can set this one sharing setting at the very beginning. So select the minimum level access required in the master record to create, edit, or delete the detail record. Other than that, there's not separate security settings or ownership settings. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, capacity. So each custom object can have two master detail relationships. Um, and that goes kind of either direction. Um, so you, you can't be part of um, two master details where you're the detail and two masters where you're, two master details where you're the master just two total relationships um, uh, for master details specifically between an object and any other object uh, there can be a total of 25 relationships which that would be pretty complex anyway uh, but there's a maximum of 25 total relationships and i don't believe this is a system limitation, but it's said as a best practice to not exceed 10,000 child records for a single master detail relationship. Um, so that was a recommendation. It was not listed as a, as a system requirement. Um, and then the related to entry can't be changed after you save it. So once you've established this relationship, uh, if you if it was wrong, if it if it was not what you intended it to be, you've got to delete it and start over. You can't uh, you can't just uh, change it to something else. Which that's pre it's pretty easy to set up, so uh, that wouldn't be a problem. A couple more. Uh, I have another slide on reporting, um, but one of the things that uh, as you're setting up the master detail reporting, there's a checkbox that says allow reporting uh, or allow reports. So you just need to make sure that you have the allow reports checkbox checked. Um, and then you'll use the summary field to report uh, on details between the master and the detail relationship on reporting. And I'll talk a little bit more about summary field uh, in a couple slides. Um, oh, I think this was a copy paste error. So apologize about this bottom part. Okay, last thing uh, on the, the master detail before I go through the setup people. Um, so there's a, a junction object. So if you want, so master detail objects by definition are intended to be uh, one parent to one child or one parent to multiple children. So one to one or one to many. If you would like to do a many to many example, you can use uh, what's called a junction object. So the junction object is the child object that has two parent objects. Uh, the first one that's set up is known as the primary master object, and then the second one is the secondary. And this allows many-to-many -many relationships. So this, this is the example straight out of Trailhead. Um, you can see you could have multiple job postings, and you could have multiple applicants. Um, and so you could have one applicant or you could have multiple applicants that wanted to apply to multiple job postings. So that would make it a many to many relationship. Um, and you use that job uh, posting to applicant, you use that, that specific 
um, a better way to refer to that is an application um, would be the child to both of them. So the applicant can have an application to one job posting, the applicant can have an application to a second job posting, uh, the job posting can have applications from several applicants. So using that junction object, which here is, is the application uh, applying for the job, that allows the many to many relationship to work. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I guess I hadn't thought too much about this before. I've never used this in practice, but um, the, the first object that's set up is the primary. So it is possible for reporting that you would want to consider which, which um, relationship you establish first, or if they're in the wrong order, you know, delete, delete the one that's first and, and reestablish that relationship as a secondary. So I gave my little scenario here. I have a custom object called theaters, uh, all closed right now, and they have some information. And then uh, uh, the child object is auditorium. So each, each theater has several uh, children objects. So I just, just to make this kind of uh, a little bit real. So the theater is AMC Studio 28. That's here in Olathe, Kansas. And then a child object, one of its children objects would be auditorium number five and that has 76 seats. So uh, that would be, these are, you know, my real world scenario is I have a theater, the theater has auditoriums, and I'm creating this, these two custom objects to capture that information that then we would use on opportunities as we establish them. So I have, you can see I'm in my custom, my, uh, custom object auditorium, which is the child, and I want to create this relationship with theater. So I, I'm in, uh, I'm in object manager, I'm in auditorium, I have fields and relationships, I'm going to click new. And that's going to give me all of the uh, field types, data types. And so I'm going to pick master detail relationship. And I'm going to pick the parent object that it's related to, which in this case is theater. And then I have these options here with security. So I'm going to decide uh, whether it's uh, read only or if they need read write um, to access these records and change these records. The only sharing settings that, that change. And then uh, I've just kind of blown it up here. And then you can also see that I can, if I want to, I can check the, uh, the child records can be reparented to other parents if I wanted to do that as well. And then I've got that set up. So uh, before I uh, go on, just wanted to see if anyone had any oh boy see if i had anyone had any questions or anything uh up to this point so one thing that i would add there is that your master details can have um three up to three layers um so you can have like a, a grandparent parent child but you can you couldn't have grandchildren you couldn't go a fourth level of master details down the same same path so yeah very good great job good good very good stuff cool um well we'll move on to lookups these are a little easier uh this is when they're a little bit more loosely related um so you know just for example when you delete uh, a parent and a and a parent child and, and lookups can be uh, many to many as well but when you delete what would be considered the parent uh the child is not deleted um so here are the 25, uh, the, it's 25 total relationships, but so a max of 25 lookup relations per object, per custom object. Um, the parent field may be required on the, chi on the child, but it does not have to be. Um, and so at this box at the bottom, it shows when you're going through and setting up a lookup, uh, you have the option to check this box that says required. Um, so if, if, you know, if it's loosely related, more loosely related than, than a true master detail, but you really, you know, it, it is tighter than just kind of a loose association. You can make it required to have uh, the relationship established on each record. If you don't make it required, you have a couple um, different options. Um, it says uh, the first one's clear the value, so just leave it blank. Um, and then one option is don't allow it to delete. So if there already is something there, you can't clear it out and leave it blank when you save it. 
Uh, and in the, the document, it says there's also an option of delete this record also. It, it did not show up um, when I was doing my example of the lookup field. So I'm not sure if that has to be done separately. But if you don't make the uh, parent, file, parent field required, you can do uh, these options right here. Uh, lookups do not have the roll-up summary field that we'll talk about when we get to reporting. Um, so there, I mean, there's other ways to kind of work around that using custom reports, uh, but they don't have the traditional summary fields. And you can't delete, uh, so this, this was just another kind of capacity thing that I learned. You can't delete an object or record if the combined number of records between the two is 100,000. Uh, so when you do get into um, like really large um, databases, like for us, for AMC, it's our, you know, AMC uh, A-list membership. You know, we have almost a million people. So if, if, we, if we somehow decided, you know what, we're not going to keep track of the, the custom object part of that, um, we wouldn't be able to delete it. You literally have to manually delete it down to get under 100,000 combined between the parent and child or between the two uh, objects before you can delete. Um, couple other things. So uh, same categories as we looked at for master detail. Uh, parent can't be deleted while containing child records. Um, you've probably seen that before when you try and delete something that has a, a related field, it, it won't let you. It'll tell you you have to go to the child object first. Um, so you can't delete it while there's child records. And basically a, an object or a record that is pointing to another record, uh, it won't let you delete that parent object. Um, and then uh, just something for field history tracking, uh, when you delete a parent uh, object, it does not capture that on the account history of the child. So um, you, you're losing that history tracking when it gets deleted. Um, at least on on the on the records and what they're associated to. So, uh, just something to be aware of. If it is important to capture when something was deleted, it won't be captured on the child object. Um, ownership, sharing, and security. So, ownership can be independent. Sharing can be independent, and and security can be independent. Uh, same thing. So um, unlike the master detail where all of that is inherited from the parent to the child, they don't have to be inherited uh, for a lookup relationship. They can be, but they don't have to be. Okay, reporting. Um, I, this table was in, one of the, uh, was in one of the documents I looked at and I just, it was, I just copied and pasted it. I thought it was easier than retyping the whole thing myself. Um, so you can see with lookup, um, you can do standard report types of an object with itself or with first, second, or third lookup based on the original object. You can do master detail reporting off of the master object or off of the master, uh, and you can look at the master object by itself or with the detail or first, second, or third lookup. And then with the many to many, uh, we talked about with using the junction object, the first master is the primary, the second one established is the secondary. So you can base it off of the first or the second one um, with the junction object. You can go second, secondary master object through the junction object to the primary. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. And that's on top of the fact that, that you can also do custom reporting as well to, to join the data together. Um, there, uh, with master detail, Specifically, you also have this option of the roll-up summary. Um, so this is a good field. Uh, this is a good field to do that kind of makes reporting easier. Um, so the roll-up field is is established on the master record, and it uh, rolls up details from the summary. So for my you know scenario, we're talking about theaters. I, I talked about Studio Twenty Eight, the theater here in Olathe, Kansas. So that has. 28 auditoriums. Each one of those auditoriums has a seat count on it. And so maybe I want to know how many seat counts are in the entire theater when you add all the auditoriums together. So I took, I took my, my theater master object, I took my auditorium child object, and then I did a sum of the field seat count off of auditoriums. And then that's going to give 
theater its own uh, field, which I call total seat count. And total seat count will be a, a roll up a summary, a roll up summary of the seat count field on the child app. So that's just kind of a simple example of how you can use the roll up summary to do to get reporting between a master and a detail object. Um, questions or, or anything to add before we go to um, these quick overview of the other types of relationships? I, I, I feel like I've learned something new because I didn't realize on the <clears throat> that there was a primary and a secondary on the many to many relationships. That's kind of cool. Trust me, I learned a lot of this new. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. It's, it's, it's one of the fun things about doing this is you go, you, you get to uh, go back and study things that you've never, that you don't even think about um, after you've been in it for a while. So it's very, very cool. Well, and you know, the, uh, the trailhead pages are great. Um, they also always have at the bottom, like uh, other, other things for review. And those links to those other pages have like a ton of detail that's you know pretty yeah. pretty well laid out. Yeah, I found a link too that I added to our study guide um, deal next to your topic as well. So um, as a resource, so if you are wanting to study more about this topic, there's a link there that'll help as well. Absolutely. So a couple other relationships um, just to be aware of um, hierarchical hierarchical. Uh, which is just for the user object. Uh, that's where you can say, okay, this sales uh, account manager, and this is their supervisor. Um, so it's, it's user to user relationships. Um, there's self relationships. Um, so this is um, a lookup relationship of, of an object to itself. And this can just basically say, you know, I want one record to, um, have a lookup relationship with another record within the same object. Um, so one specific record can't link back to itself, not that you would really need to, but a record can link, can be a lookup relationship to another record within the same object. Um, the example that they gave is campaign to campaign. And um, I didn't spell it all out here, but it actually made a lot of sense. Like when you think about how the campaign object could be used uh, for marketing, you know, they were talking about like, okay, we're going to do uh, a discount uh, campaign, but then in the middle of it, we're going to do a holiday campaign and, and those campaigns are going to overlap and they are going to be related to each other. Uh, so that actually made a lot of sense of why you would want to do a self lookup. Um, then they, uh, within like the campaign object um, and, it, and it, for self relationships, it can't be many to many. It's either one to one or one to many. Um, then there's two other uh, objects that are that go outside of the basic Salesforce org. Um, so an external lookup is where the child object is usually inside uh, sales inside Salesforce as a standard object or a customer object, where Salesforce can almost act like a junction object between two externals. Um, and then the parent object with an external lookup, the parent object is the external object. And so they use that external objects uh, records ID uh, for the lookup uh, in the field. So when you establish the relationship, you establish it as a um, external. I'm going to go back to here. So you click, you do this external lookup relationship. And then uh, on the when you actually put in the field, you put in the external records ID for the field. Uh, indirect lookup kind of works the other way around. On this one, the parent object is in Salesforce as either a standard or custom object, and the child object is now the external object. Um, so those are both options as well. Um, last thing here, converting. So um, you may have a master detail that you want to convert to a lookup relationship or vice versa. Uh, can you convert a master detail to a lookup Yes, as long as you don't have roll up summary field. So to, before you did it, you'd have to essentially delete the roll up summary to turn a master detail into a lookup since the lookup relationship can't have a roll up summary. 
And then the other way around, if I want to convert a lookup to a master detail, yes, you can do that too. The caveat on that one is that you do have to have that lookup field populated on all of the records. So all the records have to have the have to have a um, a master record that it's pointing to in order to do that conversion. Okay, and then um, I found a few, I took a couple of the uh, practice exam websites. I found a few of those. Uh, Terry and Carl, I don't know if you want, I, I mostly put the question up before I put the answer up. So I don't know if you want me to like, like give everyone a chance to answer or what. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good either way. Yeah. Um, why, don't, why don't you, if you, if you know the answer, uh, throw it in the chat window or something. Okay. I won't be able to see it, but I'll just I'll just throw it oh. out there and then uh, give it a second and then, and then we can answer. So roll up summaries are only available in. So it's pretty straightforward. Tanner, Tanner it. says master detail. Okay, great. Master detail. Good job. Yeah. Okay, what is a self relationship? Okay. That first one, it's a lookup field to the same object. Uh, what type of relationships can you recreate create on external objects? Choose three. And it's lookup, external lookup, and indirect lookup. This one, <laughs> this one I, I accidentally answered before I copied and pasted. <laughs> I, I'm it? confused. <laughs> what is a junction object? As a custom object that has two master details. And which of the following statements is true about uh, lookup items, lookup relationships? Uh, parents always required, deleting an object deletes the child, security across the child is dependent on the parent, or a parent record is not required. And for that one, parent record is not required. I think this is the last one. What's true about master detail? Uh, you cannot delete a child. Each custom object can have up to two master detail relationships. You can have a child record without a parent. When the parent record is deleted, all child records will be deleted. And it's these two. So master detail, you can only have two. And when you delete the parent, all children will be deleted. That's all I got. Um, so I basically use Trailhead and then this resources page within the Trailhead page is where I got a lot of additional info. So uh, appreciate it. And uh, I, I think that can go up to like the um, the same page with picture slides as well, right? Yep. Sorry, I think I'm having a little internet trouble. It's, uh, <laughs> I missed the last part of what you just said there, but um, Good stuff. Nice job, Matt. Thank um, you. One thing that I would um, say is the um, the slide, and this is just me guessing, because I don't. Am I cutting? Do you still have me, or am I am I good? Yeah, okay. 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 I just had a message so that I'm unstable. Thank you, Zoom. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. My family might agree. Um, so. Um, <laughs> The, the one slide you had on the um, changing a uh, lookup to a master detail or vice versa, I would almost, I'd be shocked if that's not a question on the exam. Just, mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I have no idea, but I would be really surprised if that's not on there. Yep. I will add that I just found out that you can't change a, uh, a lookup to a master detail if the lookup object is a managed object. Oh, mm -hmm. I was just trying to do that uh, for my own self, and I found out, yep, this is a managed object, so you can't actually do that. And it's my own managed object that I'm doing it, but yeah, since it's <laughs> in a managed package, I can't change it from a lookup to a master detail anymore. Very interesting. All right. Well, I think, too, uh, quick, Matt, if you want to put all those questions that you had in, in our, in, in the, um, Google, what is that called? The slides? Sheet. Yeah, the sheet. <laughs> I get them all confused. The Google sheet. We have a, a tab in there for questions and Terry can use those when we do review at the end. So those are really good questions. Yeah, they're excellent. Yeah. Cool. I will, I'll do that. I saw, I saw that on the, on the shared 
Yeah, cool. Your links as well, if you wanted to put those in that sheet next to your topic too, that uh, as resources, that works really well too. Okay. Very nice job. I was, that was very, very good. Thank you. Taylor? Yep. Um, so I will go ahead and- I said uh, it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I realized it after I said it. <laughs> I told you um, I would. I'm consistent. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Uh, so I wish that I would have um, still have been going first because now my presentation has to live up to that. And, <laughs> well, uh, but <laughs> um, so yeah, my uh, topic kind of going off of what Matt was just talking about, uh, about data models. So we're really brief. Um, what is a data model? Um, thoughts in designing a data model? Um, then I have a quick question and then I'll actually go into Salesforce to kind of go through a scenario uh, similar to how Matt kind of showed creating some of those relationships. Um, so what is a data model? Uh, simply put, uh, it's a way to model what database tables look like in a way that makes sense to humans. And so database tables in Salesforce are what are referred to as objects. Um, so it's a set and collection of different objects that you use in order to achieve some functionality that you need uh, to get out of Salesforce. Um, so it, it's, it's just basically how you set up, you know, what legacy known as database tables and how you want to structure how these tables connect to each other and how they uh, potentially get data from one another. So in designing a data model, uh, one of the main things to think about right away is how your data is going to be used. And once you have those ideas of how it will be used, then you can kind of model your data off of how that is going to be, um, you know, down to the sharing levels too. If certain, so in Matt's examples, if you know that, you know, the people who work at theater A should only be able to see records, uh, all the auditoriums that are on theater A, and they shouldn't be able to see theater B, then maybe you know, one of the advantages of making them a master detail relationship is you have all of that sharing uh, rules off of the theater level. So you don't have to go through and make uh, sharing rules and security things for all of your auditoriums too. They just inherit from the parent theater object. Now there's two ways that you can create these data models. So one is from uh, Object Manager and one is from Schema Builder. So um, <clears throat> I'll show both of these as well. Um, and Matt kind of alluded to the Object Manager way of creating these as well. Um, so just a quick question here, which is a lot of information on here, um, but so your, your company is wanting to roll out a new product line and they want to be able to send samples, but do not want to follow the traditional sales process. The customer could request multiple products and they'd like to summarize the quantity of product samples being sent. You've determined the best approach would, not, would be to not use opportunities, but instead, instead build a custom solution. How would this best be modeled? Uh, would you create one custom object to capture the request and a record would be added for each? Um, you create two custom objects, one to hold summarized data and a second to hold each product. The product requests would have a lookup field to the summary and the summary would have a rollup summary field to calculate the total. Uh, would you make two objects, one for uh, each product request and have a master detail on the summary object and a summary would have a rollup or would you have two objects, one um, to hold, hold each product and one to hold the summarized data. And the summary would have a lookup on the lookup field to the product request and would have a rollup summary to calculate the total quantity. Looks like B and D were the same, but. <laughs> and so the correct answer here would be C. Um, you'd want to have uh, you know, based off of what um, Matt was just presenting too, you know, B 
and D can be thrown away because when you have a lookup field, you can't have a rollup summary using lookups. The only way to have that rollup summary is to have it be a master detail relationship. So this little scenario um, that I found, I wanna see all the subscriptions a customer has purchased. A customer can have multiple subscriptions. I wanna see payments for each subscription and a subscription can have multiple payments. And I want to have access to subscriptions and payments whenever I access, whenever I have access to the account. So in this scenario here, um, we can use the, Oh, sorry, we can use the standard account object to be our customer in this scenario. Um, and as we're reading through this, we see that they should have uh, subscriptions that each customer can have. And then on each of those subscriptions, there is then another payment um, object that they can have as well. So we kind of can start from the top down. So thinking that we want to use a regular account object, we can then say, okay, I think we'll need two custom objects here, one for subscriptions and then one for payments. So we can create those two custom objects here. Um, so we'll have a uh, subscription and We can leave everything how it is and we'll just say launch the new tab here. So we'll set up our subscriptions object. And for some reason lately when I tried to do tabs, it just freezes on that screen. Okay, so we'll just pick set up our custom tab and I will add it to my little app of our study guide here, study group. Now I'll also go through and make our other custom object that we needed, which was payment. So again, we'll follow the same process of all the standard settings for everything. And for some reason, again, it wants to freeze on the tabs page. Okay, so pick our little icon. Again, I'll include it on our app builder study app. So now that we have our three objects, we have accounts, subscriptions, and payments. I'll start down from the top level. So we know that accounts need to have, um, accounts need to have a relationship to subscriptions so that we, we can see all of the subscriptions that each of these accounts have. So from object manager, we'll find our subscriptions. And we'll create a new field for this, saying we want this to be a master detail relationship. And we'll relate it to our accounts. And so we'll just call this subscription. Um, and as Matt alluded to, you can you know, pick the sharing setting that you want and if you want it to be reparented, but we'll leave all of that as standard. Hey, Tyler, you know. do you want yep. your uh, uh, name of your field to be subscription or do you need it to be account? It's your field label and your oh, field Oh, whoops. Name. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whoops. That might be confusing later on. Just no, so. no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You want it, so the field name here is what you want the name of this master detail to be um, on your subscription object. Yep, yeah, there you go. So you wouldn't want it to be uh, a subscription on subscriptions, it's actually your account. So yeah, we'll name it account. 
Good catch, Carla. And we'll just add it to the layout as well and have it be available for, um, so adding related lists to the different types. So you'll want to add this and I'll talk about it later because you want to be able to see um, all of the subscriptions that an account has when you're viewing the account record. So we'll save that. And so now we've created this master detail for our uh, subscriptions that coordinate back to the parent of account. So now, based on our scenario, we also want to have payments for each subscription. So we'll also need to set up the uh, same type of relationship from payments to subscription. Now, I'll show how to do this with the other way, which I prefer the object manager, but just to show the two different ways that you could do this, I'll show the other uh, relationship using Schema Builder. So from Schema Builder, um, if no one's, if people aren't familiar with this really, um, you can select your different objects that you want. So we'll say uh, we want subscription and then we also want payment. Uh, which I don't know where those just went to. Whoops. Um, okay, so here's subscription and payment. So in the same type of process that you would do from object manager, you want a master detail field on your payment object. So you can drag that onto there. And so this is a subscription. And so you fill out the same type of settings and everything for this. So we want it related to subscription. And we can save that. And so now you see that these are now connected with this um, little legend that shows you that this is a master detail connection between subscription and payment. So that's the other way that you can set up these, uh, setting up your data model. And so just to also kind of see, Schema Builder is nice to see kind of your overall um, data model here. So if we bring in the account object here, um, which for some reason to put it way over there, we can now see our overall data model that we've created. So accounts have a relationship to subscriptions and then subscriptions have a relationship to parent or payment. So now from this, now that we have our model created here, we can just check to see um, how well uh, we actually set this up here. So let's just look at uh, Burlington Textiles here. So from the related list, we can see our subscriptions here. So we can create a new subscription. And let's just say this is called Trailhead Weekly. And you can save our subscription. So here we can see our trailhead subscription. And from here, we can then see that uh, maybe that way doesn't actually add it as a related list. Um, so let me, so we need to add it as a related list or at least show it on here. Um, so we can make a payment, so payment type, uh, you know, whatever, test payment, and our subscription, tie it to Trailhead Weekly. So now we have our payment that's tied to our subscription, and we can see on our subscription, I think I need to add the related list to here. Um, yeah, so doing it through that schema builder uh, appears to have skipped that one um, 
section of adding it as a related list to our layout. Okay, so we'll add in our payments as our related list here. And now from our subscription, we should be able to see the payments that are tied to that subscription. So we can see this one payment that's tied to our subscription. And then again, from our accounts, we can see uh, our subscriptions that are tied to that account. Is there any questions or comments or feedback that I might have uh, missed something. That was a really good example. And the, the example you had on your um, slide deck was good. A good type of question you would probably get on a test. A lot of scenario based questions like that. It probably won't be as wordy as this one, but it, um, <laughs> but it will be something similar to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the way you described um, knocking out certain answers was really good to look for, oh, you know, you can't have a roll up on a lookup. So that just automatically takes that out is a really, really good way to eliminate a lot of answers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially when they get a little wordy, like some of them may look for the key things to say a lookup and summary. No, those don't go well together. Right. Yeah, I've always told people read the read the question, the, the question portion of the uh, scenario first, and then go back, read the scenario, because then you know exactly what you're looking for. And a lot of times, you know, you can, you, you know, the right answer as you're reading the reading the scenario, then you just have to find it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, very good. Very good. All right, well, we're down to just the last minute here. So just I'm going to take over real quick and um, share. Um, on our uh, next week, uh, Scott had to drop already, but um, next week we do have Scott up to present and he is aware of that. Um, Lori, I moved you up into next week, if that's okay. Um, will that work out all right? Sure, yeah, okay. that works. Um, I think we had, I had Cole there, but I have not seen or heard from him. So I'm gonna double check with some of the other folks just to see if they are planned to participate or not. Um, and so I will probably be making some adjustments this week on, on who's presenting when, so. I don't see Tanner in that list either, so you can. Tanner is not on that list. Probably replace Cole with Tanner if you need to, or. Yeah, okay. Very good. I see Tyler, I don't see Taylor. Where's he? <laughs> <laughs> Funny man, you are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> with that, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> all right thanks guys um we will if you have any questions or if you struggle at all with your topics please let carla or i know we'll, we're happy to try to help you help you out uh throughout the week so um thanks again and we will talk again next week thanks everyone thanks thank you bye-bye thanks